I never had a mother. No, I did not come from the stork, nor was I found in some random cabbage patch. I was conceived the old-fashioned way, in a haze of pot and free love. <laughs> it was the 60s, after all. My birth mother met my father when she was very pregnant with me. She was a very young woman at the time, and quite sure she was not ready to be a mother. My father was more than ready to be a mom. A 35-year-old single gay man living in San Francisco, he searched for more purpose in his life beyond art, music, dance, and literature. In those days, men were not the birth coaches they are now. My pregnant mother went to the hospital. The nurse asked father's name. She replied, Richard Jarrett. And that was that. I was born. My father came to get me, and my mother went the other way. It was fun having a mommy dad. He got Mother's Day cards and Father's Day cards. <laughs> he was the most affectionate, attentive, and intelligent parent a child could want. The only time I regretted not having a mom was when it came time to grooming my hair. I know what you're thinking. Didn't she just say he was gay? Yeah, well, he wasn't very gay when it came to hair. <laughs> we didn't discover conditioner until I was a teen. That was a revelation. <laughs> I'll never forget my first grade picture. I was horrified when I saw my hair. Not only was I snaggletoothed, but the part in my hair was more zigzag than straight, and my clips were completely catawankus. You can be sure that the following year, I befriended my second grade teacher. She was an expert French braider. I did have a habit of adopting a mother's along the way teachers and babysitters, even a few friends that were older than me. But in all honesty, Richard was my everything. He was my sun and moon and stars, and he shared with me all of his brilliance and love. We were inseparable. He took me to the opera, the ballet, the symphony. I used to roam the corridors of the opera house in San Francisco, gaping at the vaulted ceilings and elaborate chandelier. Even though we were poor, I never lacked for anything. My every essential need was met. I'm not talking about the need for clothing and housing and food. I'm talking about the need for security, patience, unconditional love, mutual trust, respect, and admiration. Spiritual guidance, he was the most spiritual atheist I ever met. <laughs> Once when I was still fairly young, say 10 or 11, my father had me in tears. We were talking about having purpose in life. His words were so profound, yet deliciously simple. I cried because of the sublime truth of it. I cried because I understood. And although I did not thank him at the time, I knew it was an amazing gift he was giving me. We built our relationship with hard work. We did not take our love for granted. I remember one time in high school, I asked my dad if I could drop acid and go see Fantasia with my oh-so-cool friends. <laughs> he said no. I asked why. His reply was, drugs kill brain cells, and you don't get them back. Well, I initially thought, OK, I can still go if I want to. I have all kinds of freedom and independence. But he made sense. And it wasn't hard, really, to decide not to go. A betrayal of his trust would have been devastating. When it came time to address the whole SEX issue, man, he was brilliant. He just put it to me straight, no pun intended. <laughs> he said, you're going to start to have urges and desires. They are natural. I only ask that before you do anything, that you come see me so that we can go to the doctor and get birth control. I totally fled, embarrassed and overwhelmed at the time. Come a butt. A scant year later, I was knocking on his door. 
I never had to put myself in a dangerous position or had to lie. There were rules, of course, but I was in control of my life. When it came time for me to think about children, well, I was skeptical. I finally had my career going and quite frankly did not see why I needed to take such a traditional role in life, especially since I had such a non-traditional background. Not long before he passed, Richard told me how important it was to have children. Almost in tears, he explained that having children gives you value as a human being, that you are not whole until you make that kind of commitment to another. I was blown away. This intelligent, brilliant, beautiful, artistic, confident, magnificent man confided to me that he did not learn life's true value till he had a child, me. So here we are. Here I am. I am a mother. And I pray that I might be half the mother my father was to me. Thank you.